Well, many of you must have experienced the trouble getting ketchup out of bottle. And if drive, you appreciate the coating that's put onto the windshield so that you can have good vision when driving in the rain. And for the majority of us who live in Singapore in high-rise building, how we wish our window panels could have self-cleaning function. Today, these needs are mostly met through chemical coating, but it doesn't have to be. Nature provides a number of clues of designing these functions if we look closer. Well, Singapore might not be the destination of choice if you're a nature lover, but one of my children's favorite weekend activities is going to the park. So when we're in our park, I will sometimes put on my scientist hat. I'll tell them, look at that leaf, look at how clean it is. Look at the butterfly, how beautiful the butterfly wing is. I'm not a biologist, but I've been fascinated with the many unique characteristics of natural system. And I've been interested to copy them onto the material that we use day to day. Let me give you some example of what I consider unique characteristic of nature. Lotus leaf is known for its ever-clean surface, no matter how muddy the pond is. When a dew drops or rainwater falls on a leaf, the drops will rose off spontaneously. As it drops off the leaf, it picks up dirt along its way, hence give rise to the self-cleaning effect. On the other extreme, water will pin very strongly onto rose petal. In roses, dew drop magnify the beauty of the flower to attract insects for pollination purpose. What is interesting to me is that the secret behind these unique characteristics is actually in the textures that's found on the leaf or the petals. Take, for example, the self-cleaning effect of lotus leaf. The self-cleaning comes from a bumpy texture on the leaf surface, while the water pinning effect of rose petal comes from a rather pointy surface texture. Surface texture is also the reason behind many unique characteristics found in insects, like the beautiful color of butterfly wing, the ability of gecko to climb on ceiling and wall without having the need of having sticky glue, or the ability of water striders to skip on water. Research into mimicking natural system or biomimicry is not new. In fact, the example that I've showed you have been copied into synthetic material. Except that for each of those examples, a highly specialized technique has to be developed. That's because the textures in nature are highly complex. Many of them have three-dimensional design in it, and some of the dimensions are so fine, it goes into the nanometer scale. To add to the complexity, the design often are made out of combination of sizes and shape, even within a single texture. So even though biomimicry has been pursued for a while, there hasn't been a single technique that's capable of recreating all these kind of structures and versatile enough that you can do that onto a variety of materials. But now we believe there is one. For about eight years now, uh, my teammates and I have been working on a technology called nanoimprint technology. This is a technology that was developed about 20 years ago uh, as a nano processing tool for the semiconductor industries. But you actually have a very similar working principle to the century-old stamping or embossing process. Because of its similarity to the traditional plastic embossing process, I thought, hey, there's an opportunity for us to use this to recreate the biomimetic textures onto plastic materials. The techniques is capable of producing structures as fine as nanometer, as well as the flexibility to incorporate very complex texture into it. So using this technique alone, we have been able to recreate the textures of lotus leaf, rice leaf, water striders, and butterfly wing. Now I want to show you three of my favorite examples. The first example is related to color. Chemical dyes is used heavily to decorate the, our material wall. And you know that the color of some chemical dye fades over time. But you can keep butterfly in a photo frame for many, many years without losing the color. Some species of butterflies are known for its sharp and radiant color. This unique characteristic of color in butterfly wing is not dependent on the dye. 
they actually come from a very complex surface textures. So what are you seeing here in this slide is an image of a recreated butterfly structures onto an engineering plastics. So now imagine the possibility of having color without relying on chemical dye. The second example is related to the mobile devices, which has become such a significant part of our life, our daily life. Be it the laptop, the iPads, or the mobile devices, many of us spend many hours every day looking into these devices. We will appreciate the anti-glare or anti-reflective film that's put into these devices so that to make the reading into these devices less straining on our eyes. For these, this design, uh, nature will provide another design clue. Moths have naturally anti-reflective eyes. If you looked into the moth eye, again, there is a very fine texture. So here again, we use nano-imprint technology. We recreated the moth eye structures onto a plastic film. And we show that these textures actually improve the anti-reflective function by more than 10 times compared to commercially available but chemical-based anti-reflective films. My third example is related to the habit of cleaning public places with antibacterial wipes, especially if you're a mother with young children like me. Bacterial infection is pervasive in our life, from the day-to-day -day household dealing to the more serious one in hospital. Today, most antimicrobial products rely heavily on chemical. Bacterial sites, in particular, behave like pesticides. It kills bacteria through biochemical reactions. Now, many of these products have raised environmental as well as safety concerns. For example, in the marine industries, a particular paint that's been used for ships for many years is now being banned because we know that, we know that it is detrimental to many marine species. Well, guess what? Many marine species actually already have anti-fouling solution. The skin of sharks and dolphins is covered with textures that not only allow them to swim fast, but it's also anti-fouling. So here again, we use nanoimprint technology without any chemical coating, without bactericide, we recreated the antimicrobial function of shark skin onto engineering materials. Now I want to show you two video clips that demonstrate the function, the wettability control function of plant leaf recreated onto plastic material purely through the use of nano imprinting. What you're seeing in that video is water rolling off this piece of plastics. Uh, this effect, the water rolling off effect is done without any chemical coating. Another extreme, if I put a rose petal structures onto the, petal, onto the plastics, again without any, any chemical coating, we recreated the water pinning of rose petal onto plastic, no chemical used. So we have, um, we have shown the concept of biomimetic surface in, in the lab. In order for the idea to be truly useful, to be translatable into product that we use, it's necessary that we can mass produce them. So for this, we turn to another century-old technology. You know the row-to-row -row press printing process or row-to-row -row embossing process that's used in industry for many years. So for about two years now, um, we have been developing the row-to-row -row version of the nano-imprint technology. Today, we can produce this biomimetic concept in a row of meters or meters in the lab. So by incorporating the biomimetic textures into plastics, the textures become an integral part of the plastics. It's like a texture skin, or if you will, a biomimetic skin onto the plastic material, and that can be done without using any chemicals or any harmful solvent in the process. So, what I have here is a tip of uh, facial cream. Just like getting ketchup out of the bottle, we usually try to get every bit out of this bottle as well. So now imagine if we can incorporate the wettability control texture into the inner part of this tube, we just might be able to use every drop of the cream easily. So we have demonstrated the biomimetic skin concept into the film product today, but we haven't been able to do it in these form factors. I believe that if we pursue this research further, and if product manufacturer were looked into the use of surface textures to improve product function, it just might be a way to reduce the reliance on chemicals. Thank you.